seek him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Sunday in Lent, part of the 12th chapter of Genesis, verse 1. 
verses 1 through 9, starting with the first. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed to the land to a place at Shechem, to the Oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there, he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. The Epistle reading for us this day, word of us in the fourth chapter of Romans. Verses 1 through 8, and also 13 to 17, starting with the first verse. What then, shall we say, was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work but trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks, of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come to the law but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace, to be guaranteed to all his offspring not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom we believe, who gives life to the dead and calls to existence the things that do not exist. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of 
morning to say John, the third chapter, verses 1 to 17.
peace be to you from our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's meditation comes to us from the Gospel lesson. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. This is the gospel of the Lord. As we consider these words penned by St. John, the blessed apostle, and the inspiration of the Spirit, we find a theme of this orientation is Jesus the teacher. As you and I have been able to go through life, you and I have been blessed with some really, really good and awesome teachers. They are the ones who have pushed us. They are the ones who have forced us to take it to the limit. They are the ones who have forced us to push the envelope so that you and I can do things we never thought we could do, be more than we ever thought that we could be. Their voice and words still ricochets around in our brain. So even to this day, we are still taking it to the limit and pushing the envelope. We are the ones who always tweak and adjust and tweak and adjust and tweak and adjust, learning new things, incorporating them into ourselves, and testing those things that do not work or apply to us so you and I can be all that we can be. Of all the teachers you and I will have in this life and in this world, the best is and will always be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This brings us to the Gospel lesson for today. In the Gospel lesson for today, we find Jesus, the teacher. We also find another teacher. His name was Nicodemus. He was a teacher of religion to the Jews. But in the beginning, the teacher Nicodemus he did not have faith. He did not have the gospel. He didn't even have a clue as to what the gospel was. So all he had was the law. And so he taught according to the law. Works righteousness. If you want things to go good for you, then you must outwardly keep the scriptures. You must outwardly keep the Ten Commandments. You must outwardly keep the hundreds of rules of the rabbinic code. Because in doing that, then you can buy and earn and merit God's love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and so on. The exact opposite of what St. Paul says in the Epistle Lesson for today. In the Epistle Lesson for today, St. Paul tells us we are saved by grace through faith. Nicodemus better as a teacher of religion to the Israelites. He had heard about this new rabbi teacher coming out of Nazareth, whose name was Jesus. So he took him out himself a couple of times to go see him. Let's just see what he's doing, and let's just hear what he's got to say. So Nicodemus did. And as Nicodemus did, he saw that Jesus is the greatest and the best teacher because not only does he say it, he also does it. So he saw Jesus giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, curing the lepers, curing those who were lame, casting out demons, raising people from the dead, proclaiming the good news to the poor. And as Nicodemus saw all this in her life, he then went back home and he thought and pondered about what he had seen and what he had heard. Nicodemus realized that there was something wrong. Something is not right. But for the life of him, he didn't have a clue as to what it was. So, he wrangled a meeting with the new hot rabbi teacher of Nazareth named Jesus at night. It was cold and dark. Cold and dark on the outside. He looked at the cold and dark in the heart and soul of 
Nicodemus because he did not have faith. And that was the problem. He did not have faith. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so we find this long dialogue taking place between now Jesus the teacher and now the student, Nicodemus. And as Jesus the teacher taught, we may go to the fact that he taught in parables. Earthly stories that were present, general truths that apply to everybody in all times, places, and spaces, that also had spiritual meanings. These are the things that become the portals and the gateways toward God. These are the things that become the portals and the gateway of the faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. But because Nicodemus did not have faith, whenever Jesus spoke of spiritual things, Nicodemus could only understand it in earthly and worldly terms. And so the teacher, Jesus, began. You know, Nicodemus, there is this present general truth, and everybody knows it. Flesh can only give birth to flesh, and spirit can only give birth to spirit. Here's the problem, Nicodemus. You must be born again. Here Jesus was talking spiritually. Jesus was talking about having the gift of saving faith. But notice the reaction of Nicodemus. How can this be? How can a man possibly enter into a second time his mother's womb and be born again? But at least the great matter was working. At least the student Nicodemus was thinking about it. At least we were making some progress. So, the new hot rabbi teacher of Nazareth, he continued with Nicodemus. The best teachers know their students, their strengths, their weaknesses, where they're coming from, and where they're at. Jesus, the teacher, he realized that Nicodemus was a Pharisee. The Pharisee of the Jews was also men. He was an Old Testament scholar. So Jesus, the teacher, he continued, now going back to the Old Testament, making it a connection and a bridge to Nicodemus. Hey, Nicodemus, remember back when the children of God were wandering through the desert? And they didn't like the way the Heavenly Father was taking care of business? Didn't like the way that he was getting things done? So they murmured, and they grumbled, and they complained. And the Heavenly Father chastised them by sending them poisonous snakes. And the poisonous snakes spit and killed many of the Israelites. And those that were left, they turned to Moses for help. And said to Moses, Moses, we are literally dying out here. Please help us. Something's got to be done. So Moses, by prayer, went to the Lord and said to the Lord, Sure, oh, Lord. What do you want me to do right now about this? And the Lord answered Moses, I want you to find some bronze. I want you to fashion it for a mistake. I want you to take the bronze snake, put it up on a pole, and lift the bronze snake high. And then I want you to tell the people of Israel that I have connected my word of promise to that bronze snake. And the promise is, any Israelite that's bitten by a poisonous snake, who looks to the broad snake will not die, but live. This was a form of the good news. This is the type of the gospel. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The Israelites came to faith. So if any of them were bitten by a poisonous snake, by faith they could look at the broad snake on top of the pole, and they would not die, but live. They could even see do that. He understood that. He knew the Old Testament. But then Jesus said, Just as the snake was lifted up on the pole, so too the Son of Man, him, who is fully God and fully man, the Savior, must be lifted up high on the cross, so that any who have faith look to him will be forgiven and have eternal life. All of a sudden, the bang. All of a sudden, Nicodemus came to faith. All of a sudden, the light bulb went off. His 
His eyes got as big as saucers. His face lit up like the sun. Now Nicodemus had got it. Now he had faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. A hot new rabbi teacher from Nazareth named Jesus had done good. He created faith out of nothing in the heart of Nicodemus. Now it comes down to you. Now it comes down to me. The time when you and I also had no faith. We're just like Nicodemus. We're lost and needed to be found. We're dead in sin and need to be made alive in Christ. Notice in the gospel lesson for today, as Jesus the teacher was talking to his student Nicodemus, notice he also told Nicodemus, when it comes to being reborn, it must be done through water and the Spirit. For us, the sacrament of holy death. For the Holy Spirit did his job. And the divine exchanges took place. Our unbelief was replaced by saving faith. Our sins were replaced by forgiveness. Our eternal condemnation was replaced by eternal salvation. Then by faith we became students, with Jesus being our best and greatest teacher. Then by faith we were adopted into the family of God. We became legitimate children of our Heavenly Father. Problem being children. As children were just like the children of God who wandered the desert for 40 years, who did not like the way the Heavenly Father was taking care of business, did not like the way he was getting stuff done. So they murmured, and they grumbled, and they complained. Oh, so do you, and so do me. We are experts at murmuring and grumbling and complaining, because we do it every day. And practice makes perfect. Me, every one of you, we are really, really good at murmuring and grumbling and complaining. The problem is, if we murmur and grumble and complain, then we're breaking the first commandment and no longer fearing and loving and trusting in God above all other things. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. The Lamb of God who went forth unclean. Just as the bronze snake by Moses had to be lifted up on a pole, so the Israelites were bitten by poison snakes. By faith, could look at that bronze snake and that died to live. So too, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was lifted up high upon the cross. Being the Son of God, the Son of Man, our Savior. And then being raised again on the third day. So he could conquer all of sin with his righteousness, all of Satan with his love, and all of death with the resurrection to new life. So you and I as his students, so you and I as his children, can have life, can have forgiveness, can have salvation. So you and I can be his students, with Jesus as being our best and greatest teacher. And the reason Jesus is the best and the greatest teacher is this. Not only does he say it, but he also does it. So we have John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now it comes back to you, and now it comes back to me. You and I will always be his student. Jesus is and will always be our greatest and best teacher. Because not only does he say it, he also does it. There are times when you and I find ourselves being just like Nicodemus, confused, perplexed. We look up to the heavens and say, Lord, I gotta tell you, Lord, I am confused and perplexed, and I just don't get it. I just don't understand. Why is this thing happening to me? Why is it happening to me 
any time. Nicodemus met him at night when it was cold and dark. You and I can go to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, anytime. He is on call 24-7. We can call upon him in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, when it's cold and dark outside. He will always be there for you. With open ears to hear. With an open mind to understand. With open arms and hands to help. Promising you that all of your prayers will be heard and answered in the right way at the right time. Our God is never too early. Our God is never too late. He is always right on time. And one of the ways that he teaches you and me as a student is this. He lets us go down the road about two miles and get to the top of a hill. And then he looks at you and me and he says, now I want you to stop. Now I want you to turn around and be still and know God. So we look around, and then we go, oh, now I get it. Now I understand. Now I know why you made me go through that. Now I get it. Now I understand. We will always be his student. He will always be our best and our greatest teacher. Because not only does he say it, he also does it. He's the one who allowed himself to become hungry. So for those times you and I are hungry, he is our bread of life. He allowed himself to become thirsty, so we can become the living waters. He allowed himself to be a man of sorrows, as Isaiah the prophet tells us. All he knows all about sorrow. He knows all about sadness. He took all of your sorrows and all of your sadness, all of my sorrows and all of my sadness, to the cross. So when he died, it all died with him. So for those times you and I are filled with sorrow and sadness, he can come to you and me and change our sorrow and our sadness into joy and rejoicing. He allowed himself to weep. He wept at the death of his friend Lazarus and Bethany. So for the times you and I weep, he can come to us and dry every tear. He allowed himself to become weak and weary. He could even carry his cross to Golgotha. Simon of Cyrene had to do that. He allowed himself to become weak. So for those times you and I become weak and weary, he can come to us and be our strength. Stand before us with open hands and open arms. And say, come unto me, all of you who are weak and weary, and I shall give you rest. Take my yoke, for my yoke is easy. Take my burden, my burden is light. Learn from me and listen to me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart. And I promise you, for those times you are too weak and too weary to go on, I promise you, I will lift you up and mount you on the wings of eagles, so you can run up and that's dumb word more. He's the one who comes to you and me when our life and world is filled with darkness so he can shower us with his light. He's the one who comes to you and me when we're up to our ears in bad and promise to take all of our bad and change it into all that is good. He comes to you and me, reminds you and me that at the time of our death he will give to us new life and resurrection of everlasting life. You and I, you will always be one of his students. He will always be the best and greatest teacher we ever have. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one we can always count on, always trust in, always depend upon, no matter what, today, tomorrow, Saying, Amen. And all the peace of God, which has a human understanding, may it bless you faithful life everlasting. Amen. And now let us stand and sing the creed to me. <laughs>
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, a wife that Mason Heroff and Kaylee Coleman, we thank you for your goodness toward them, that we may be grateful that you have mercifully given unto them strength, friends, relatives, life, and above all, your gospel promise of peace and forgiveness. Dear Lord, as these your servants are the passing of one year and the beginning of a new year, draw your much mercy upon them through your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. what a life that Cliff Bach, Bobby Gall, Junior Pullman, Wayne Needham, Noel Rapp, Colleen Prex, Janet Sutwich, Sheila Hall, and Arlen Rappi. I grace receive healing and strength from you. The man with us might be thankful in sickness and health. And you might grant the strength to accept your will for their gentle eternal lives, visit them in their afflictions, and empower them through your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. All powerful creator, that we may praise you for blessing the earth to make it fruitful, bring you forth in abundance, whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Cross, we implore you, the work of farmer ranchers, and grant us a growing weather of sunshine and moisture, that we both have a seed time and a gathering of the fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In your hands, O Lord, we can all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Let us continue with the preface and the service of the sacrament. Turn to the page 194 in the front of the hymn. The Lord be with you. Give it 
bags, he broke it. The other side also said, take heed. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and one hand gave it thanks. He gave him saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do not be drink it in remembrance of me.